Now available in paperback and e-readers from SJS Direct, Isis, House of Isis, The Goddess Next Door takes on a hustling Hotep High Priestess in Harlem in this Afrocentric Isis series adventure. Pick up Isis, House of Isis at online booksellers today. With the recent announcement that Marvel Comics will be bringing back the poor-selling titles Iceman and the Unstoppable Wasp, it's clear to me that we are in the last days of the Marvel Age of Comics. Now, the definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing and expecting a different result, and it's clear to me that Marvel's editor-in-chief, C.B. Sabolsky, and his vice president of content and con character development, Sama Amanat, are Arkham Certified Insane. And with both of these people, Arkham Certified Insane, I have to wonder how bad will the comics published by Marvel Comics actually be. And when it comes down to many comic publishers when they are in their last days, the products are usually absolutely hot garbage. And again, the question I have to ask, will the Marvel Comics coming out of Marvel Comics in what many people call SJW Marvel be just as bad as Charlton Comics back in the 1970s, or will they be bad, just as bad as Solson Comics from the 1980s? Or will they be just as bad as many of the 1980s black and white comics that came out during the black and white indie publishing craze? Or will they be even worse than that? Because there's a barometer of terrible when it comes down to comics. And I learned about that barometer of bad comics from reading a website called MrKitty.org where I looked at a section called Stupid Comics. And if you thought some of the SJW Marvel titles were bad, then now you should look over there and see some absolutely horrific comics. Now, when I think about Marvel right now being in a free fall, not a decline, but a free fall, I have to wonder how bad will these comics be? Because when we look at Charlton in the 1970s, Charlton back then was in a state of decline, and Charlton was notorious for being incredibly cheap when it came down to publishing comics. They were known for having the lowest pay rates for creators, and they were known for cutting corners on things like art and cutting corners on things like lettering and cutting corners on things like coloring. And that led to many Charlton comics being absolutely terrible to look at and absolutely terribly laid out. And again, with Marvel paying extremely low rates right now, they are starting to look a lot like Charlton comics these days, especially when you look at the art direction in many books like your Squirrel Girl and many other comics, and you look at the way these artists are drawing these characters, they're not really taking any effort to care about proportions, they're not taking any care to think about line work, and they're not taking any care to think about colors or inks. And we're really look, seeing, again, Charlton level standards at Marvel. And that's really sad because Marvel originally was the gold standard in terms of quality and quality control. But because many of the editors at SJW Marvel want to cut rates for artists, writers, and talent, we're getting some of the worst stories we've seen in the history of the Marvel brand. And we're seeing some of the worst quality art as related to the Marvel brand. Now, when it comes down to Marvel's quality, again, it has dropped down to a Charlton level these days. But I have to wonder if it'll fall all the way down to a Solson level of quality as it relates to the overall finished product. Now, Solson Comics was a small independent publisher which was started by Marvel editor's son, Saul Brodsky. Now, Saul Brodsky passed away in the 1980s, and in 1986, his son decided to go out here and start his own independent publishing company, Solson Comics. And the comics that came out of Solson, they were absolutely horrible and they're so bad that they literally are something that you just have to behold and look at in order to understand how horrifically bad they are because 
When you look at the concepts, they're absolutely ridiculous. And when you look at the stories, they're absolutely inane. And I have to wonder, with SJW Marvel producing some of the worst comics in the history of the brand, will they fall to a level that is equal of Solson Comics? Because Solson, his only excuse was he was a young, inexperienced guy who really didn't understand how comics worked. He thought because his father worked in comics, he would understand how comics would work. But this kid, he, he just didn't know what he was doing. And by 1987, he was completely out of the comic publishing business. Now, there are even people with less experience out here making comics. And these people back in the 1980s, they didn't have the resources to go out here to print good comics nor did they have the skill to go out here and make good comics. Now, many of these people saw the success of Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they wanted to jump on the bandwagon. And that led to many small independent publishers being created out of people's garages and backyards, and they went out here making their own independent characters. And if you thought you saw cringe in an SJW Marvel book, you have not seen cringe until you've gone out and bought some of these black and white independent 1980s comics. And as someone who grew up in the 1980s and saw many of these comics on the shelves of a Forbidden Planet here in Manhattan, in, in, in New York, I have seen some cringe-worthy comics from the 1980s. These are comics that feature disproportioned art and stories that make absolutely no sense. And these were being printed on the regular by Joe and Jane Averages, who liked comics, but just didn't understand how comic books worked, how comic storytelling worked, or how comic story arcs worked. And in many cases, these books usually wound up only going maybe one, two, maybe three issues, because... Many of these guys who were making these books, they came in with aspirations of making big money, but then wound up taking huge losses as these comics wound up not making any sales overall due to their poor quality. And this is what I believe is coming to Marvel Comics in a few years, or even two years, because with your Sana Amanat being completely incompetent, and having a vision for Marvel Comics that makes absolutely no sense. She's sitting here talking about how she wants to turn Marvel into a lifestyle and entertainment brand, but when I look at the comics coming out of Marvel right now, they don't really appeal to anyone, and the quality of those comics is so poor, it's getting to be on the level of failed publishers like Charlton Comics, like Dell Comics, like Fox Comics in its last days. And when I look at C.B. Sobolski's lack of leadership and inability to maintain standards, I see Marvel Comics getting ready to be produce some of the worst comics ever produced in the history of the comic book medium. And the reason why I say that is because when I take a critical look at Marvel Comics and its insistence on doubling down on this failed diversity campaign, paying extremely low rates to creative people, and then paying extremely low salaries to editors, I see the recipe for disaster for the Marvel Publishing Division. And that's why I say that the Marvel Publishing Division is in its last days, and I have to, again, wonder what type of cringe are we going to get from your Marvel comics in the, in the last days, are we going to see comics on a level of Charlton Comics Bad? Are we going to see comics on a level of Solson Comics Bad? Or are we going to see comics on a level of 1980s independent black and white publisher bad? Because if we start seeing comics on a level of 1980s independent publisher level bad, oh my goodness. You comic fans of the 21st century just don't know what type of suffering you're going to be in for. If you want to try some of my far better SJS Direct publications, 
like the Isis series, the East Team series, the Temptation of John Haynes, and the Spencer Brother Trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.